Hello. Today we're going to be talking about some of the concepts used to secure databases. I'm Christopher Morgan from business software provider Stave. This is a database. A database stores information. It's people that put information into the database for other people to access. Data goes in and data goes out. Sometimes people put data into the database that isn't appropriate for just anyone to be able to get out. This is the root cause for all data security issues. The fact that not everyone should be able to access all the data that has been placed into the database. What kinds of data are not appropriate for everyone to access? Usually it's personally identifiable information, or PII. Specifically, this can be birth dates, driver's license information, credit card data, and personal financial information. How do we block certain people from seeing this information in the database? The solution is called data masking. Data masking lets us either hide or remove portions of the data. There are different ways to mask the data. You can mask all of the data. You can mask a specific part of the data. You can mask part of the data with something else called a token. And you can even secretly mask the data. That means there's no indication to the user who entered the data that it was masked, but an alert was sent to someone else. When we use the term masked, it either means the data is gone and doesn't exist anymore, or it's been transformed into something else. Data masking can occur either as data is being put into the database, or as data is being taken out or viewed from the database. You can even set rules so that data masking doesn't apply to all users. People with appropriate security roles, such as administrators, won't have the data they entered masked even if that same data is masked when other users enter it. When looking at masked data in the database, we may see a portion blocked out or we may see no data at all. It's important to keep in mind the database is software. It is always on a computer. That computer is in a building somewhere. It doesn't matter if the database is running on your laptop, in the basement of your office, or in the cloud. The security issues are the same. It's also important to remember that the database was built and is maintained by people. Those people are called database administrators, or DBAs, and database programmers. The DBA knows that it's not a good idea to make changes to the database while other people are using it, so the DBA usually has a copy of the database. He or she makes changes in that copy, and after the changes have been tested and he knows they work, he copies them over. We call the main database a production database, and we call any databases where development or testing work is done sub-production databases. We call the transfer process a migration or a deployment. This part is a bit technical. The database is structured around defined columns and rows of data. Each column has a definition on the type and size of data that the computer can understand. The DBA needs sample data to ensure everything in the database is working as expected. There are tools that automatically populate the database with random sample data. This is called data generation. Now the DBA is able to test his code. This process doesn't always work. Sometimes the data that is entered in the production database in the real world is a little different from what the database designer had in mind. An example might be a field that isn't long enough to store the data. To fix this, Sometimes the migration process is reversed and real production data is brought into the sub-production database so the DBA can test things with real world data. The problem is that now the DBA has full access to much of the data we wanted to protect. Even though we trust the DBA, we don't want this to happen. What can we do? The solution is called data scrambling. This means the production data is changed when it's migrated back to production. This gives the DBA data that is realistic to the production use, but not specifically the same. This helps the DBA perform accurate tests and keeps our data secure. Those are the basics of data masking, data generation, and data scrambling. They are three important techniques used to secure data used by people in databases. Thanks for watching. I'm Christopher Morgan from Stave. Visit our site to learn about our data tools suite that offers data masking, data generation, and data scrambling features to your cloud databases.